Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's me, Johnny, and welcome back to another one of our Sora videos. Today, the man himself has stepped up to the plate and has left a long message. It's not long, actually, but has left a message about the game and things to come in 2024. And a lot of people have been discuss discussing it already, but first... Let's open rewards. Yes, let's start off the video with rewards. Uh, let me get my coins, please. I have played a team for this midweek that I need to show you as we dive into this one. Uh, game week, so rare results. I'm going to do it quickly. Don't worry. Uh, game week 436. This was the team that I played. Uh, Rodri sadly gave away a, uh, a goal, basically an error led to goal. Still managed to get me 61.8. That's just how much AA this guy gets. He's a beast. And uh, yeah. The rest of the boys sadly kind of let me down. Uh, we had a clean sheet. Trent is possibly my favorite card right now. I have to say, I love how good he plays. He's just ridiculous. He doesn't need a decisive as well. Like, as you can see right here, 79.9 without a decisive. I love the guy. And I, I am just so happy that I have his card in here. And uh, sadly, Salah didn't manage to score a goal or getting an assist. But... Back out us 105th, which is basically the bottom of the tier 3 prize pool. So, maybe something usable. What is it going to be? It is... I don't even know what, what country is that. What? what Konya? Francisco Calvo. Okay, we got a player from Konya Sport. At least he plays uh, because... Ooh, he plays well. Let's go, buddy. Love them scores. I mean, when he doesn't... Yeah, he does have some bad scores in him, but technically speaking, not too bad. His L5 is pretty good. 30 euros. I'll take that. That's not bad. That's not terrible. Good thing is uh, the Turkish League continues throughout this period, so some people might be looking to pick up a player like him. Um, so this should technically be an easy sale. That's cool. Uh, if you guys are any of my people from my Discord... Just letting you know, his last sales have been around like 34, 30, 26. If anyone wants this card, send me like 25 euros. In ETH, in ETH, I'll talk about that in a second. I've switched to ETH only now, but let's dive in into what the main man himself has been saying. Few things to expect early 24. So rare pro football, new competition structure. Oh man. It's so scary reading st stuff like that. It really is. <laughs> I'm, I'm always worried when I see stuff like that, that it's not going to be like, it's not going to be well received by the community. It scares me. I really hope they smash it because what he says right here, new competition structure mirroring the real world of football. Star players be star players. What that kind of tells me is there's going to be even more emphasis on champion Europe. and it's a tough one because yes i understand the game is a global game but some leagues are just harder to play in than others let's be completely honest it's not the same when you have a player from psv eindhoven like viaman who's crushing it week in week out in the edit of vc come across to the premier league or at least play against the premier league side they look completely different there are levels to this game and I, I kind of like this approach where the star players are going to be star players again because they haven't been. They really haven't been lately. Star rewards pool specifically has been very lackluster. So I understand that people who are basically heavily invested outside of Champion Europe, which I am as well, by the way, I have a fine Lord stack in Super Rare, um, are going to be upset with this possibly if they go too hard without any type of transition from the system that we have now into a new system that heavily favors the top five leagues and teams that play Champions League football and all that stuff. So I hope if they do introduce something like this, Champion Europe players are going to be valued the most, as they should be. But at the same time, they do it in a way where there's a transition period from letting people know, hey, there's going to be more emphasis on these top players and the top clubs becoming the actual top cards in a game. The question is, how are they going to do that? If they bring in a multiplier, oh, mate, that just, oh, that blows my mind. Let's say they have this new competition structure, right? I'm just spitballing here. I have no idea if this is going to happen. Let's say if you have a Champion Europe rare card, 
a, a champion Europe card and you play it in all star rare, that card gets like, let's say, a 2% bonus. While if it is a challenger Europe card, it only gets a 1% bonus. And if it is outside that region, it doesn't get any bonus. Or you'll do 3% for champion Europe, 2% for challenger, and then 1% for the rest. That could benefit champion Europe, rare, uh, champion Europe cards a lot. They are becoming even more valuable, which could be something they do in order to make star players be star players again. So I, I kind of really wonder how they're going to structure this. If it, if it is something where it's like super simple, hey, we have all these things, nothing changes in all-star rare. You can still win the division with a freaking K-League team, which I like, obviously. But if they just go ahead and say, hey, we're moving like the majority of the cash rewards, which they have already done, and just upgrading it even more in those regions, I'm for it. If that's what you want to do and kind of diminish the star pool into like the top, top players even more than you already have, I'm okay with that, but I don't think that's what he's saying here with new competition structure. If that's what he's saying, it kind of tells me that there might be something along the lines of what I've said earlier on with like a boost for players from Champion Europe compared to players from other divisions. Like, let's say Champion Europe is 4, Challenger Europe is uh, 3%. Then you have um, the other divisions like MLS, Asia, South America. Those ones can be two. And then second division is only like a 1% bonus. <sighs> I, I don't know. I'm a bit worried about the reception of that one. I really hope they get that one right, right because I do want star players to be star players. That's the, the pool that I play this game for. I love winning those top cards. Uh, going down... Better reward structure for all sports. Yes, please. It's been awful lately. It's been horrible. More exciting openings, boxes. Ah, they've tried that Unlimited so far. Now, I, I, I'm not too keen on it because I am a FIFA player and I gave up on Ultimate Team because I don't like the fact that you have to spend so much money for just a chance to get something decent. You don't get in anything guaranteed. What I like about the current structure is if I'm first, I'm more and more likely to get something sick, a star reward. So I hope they don't mess this up with the boxes and get it right. More exciting prizes in general. Okay. I mean, that's kind of subjective. What is exciting for you might not be exciting for me. Managers want to dream big and the price structure will adjust accordingly. Managers want to dream big. I think, <coughs> I think what he basically wants to say here is, Managers want to win big, right? So hopefully this kind of plays into Super Rare because in a Super Rare division, you can basically win the same value, the reward as in Rare, as I've mentioned in the previous video. So I really hope they can do something about that. If it isn't even bringing in the best, like, like not the best, but better uh, tier one Super Rares onto, uh, onto the Super Rare division so I can win them at least make the cash reward bigger so people are more inclined to go ahead and move up from rare into super rare because there's absolutely no reason to do so right now. And then uh, clearly communicated windows where we can make changes in core gameplay twice a year. I think that was something that we already had. So they basically were saying like January and then the summer break. That was how it used to be. Uh, at least I remember them saying something like that. And then he says, manager ID, an amazing way to showcase your club, victories, collections, and more. Could be cool. It's not going to be something that turns this market upside down. It So I, I don't mind uh, visual improvements. Mobile first scouting experience. Oh, my phone is going off. Oh, hold on. My mom is calling. I got to get that. All right. So we are back again. Camera focus. Sorry. Had to get that call. Uh, my grandpa passed away. And uh, not now, um, but a few days ago. And... Uh, I had to get that call because she obviously took my grandpa back to Turkey uh, for his funeral and stuff like that. So I had to get onto that call. Sorry about the inter interruption in the video. Uh, uh, yeah, let's move on. So mobile first scouting experience. Uh, that I, 
I don't mind. I do tons of scouting on my phone, but with SoRare data. I highly doubt that SoRare itself will ever be as good as SoRare data when it comes to scouting, no matter which platform. So that is the perfect point to say. If you guys are playing SoRare, you have to sign up to SoRare data. It's the best way and the one and only reason as to why I've been able to to hold my gallery value somewhat stable in this crazy time by winning many, many rewards, by building good lineups and utilizing everything, all the data that Sora Data provides. So if you guys want to sign up, link is in the description down below. Please go ahead and use that one. That would be much appreciated. And use code Jani if you do so. Let's move on. Revamped user journey. Levels to guide users at each step of their career. Yes. Please do that, but also do it with like video tutorials. Don't just give them text to look at. Make it simple, make it understandable. That'd be much appreciated. So rare rivals, moving from close to open beta, think about it as simplified mobile first social head to head version of Sora Pro, aiming at onboarding a more casual audience that we can't onboard with Sora Pro. Now, I do understand the focus on rivals in that sense, right? I get it. But at the same time, what makes SoRare what it is, what helps them gain uh, cash is SoRare Pro. So I really hope they don't like first up, I hope they do it well. I hope Rivals is great. I hope it works out. I hope it brings a lot of people onto the game. But if they do it, they have to offer these people that come in through Rivals a chance to hop onto the Soraya Pro as easily as possible and transition into the game. That should be the key. Whoever jumps into Rivals and plays it consistently has to be onboarded onto Soraya Pro. It just has to happen because at the end of the day, Soraya needs cash flow. And that's only going to come in if people actually go from Rivals into Soraya Pro. Let's be completely honest. So let's not forget that. Big surprise at launch. Current gameplay not reflecting what you'll see at launch. That is for rivals, by the way, not this stuff. Uh, and then he says, um, mobile, full launch on Android in January. Same with iOS. Cool. Ambassadors, first mainstream campaigns with star athletes. Messi, save us. <laughs> so as you guys might remember, Messi and also Mbappe were ambassadors for so rare or still are and maybe even part investors into the game i believe mbappe was uh so i really hope they get this right please don't let this be just like nba stuff is it football that he's talking about it's not just football the nba stuff don't get me wrong that's cool and all if you guys get actual nba players to jump in and do some campaigning but what i need to see is antoine griezmann what I need to see is Mbappe, Messi, all these people, especially Griezmann, someone who knows the freaking game and has somewhat of a passion for it. Someone that knows K-League players through playing so rare, which is like publicly known. He should be the guy. So hopefully they get it right. It's a French company. It's a French guy. Get it done. And then they say partners, addition of a couple of iconic clubs that have been missing for a while. Aha. Uh -huh. Iconic clubs that have been missing for a while. I wonder what that is going to be. I actually don't know which one that could be. I mean, PSG is clearly missing, but missing for a while in terms of like a year? Or are we talking like multiple years? Because if it, if it is multiple years, I can't think of the top of my head who that would be. If you guys have any suggestion for that, let me know. And then he says, detailed roadmap coming in the days. Uh, detailed roadmap in the coming days. Wishing you all an amazing holiday season. And then a, uh, a little bit of a... Uh, what is it like a giveaway to finish that one off? So interesting, um, very decent stuff. But again, announcements of announcements. Let's not get too deep into it. I am a bit worried about the main thing that is going to be most important. New competition structure mirroring the real world of football. Star players be star players. So if you guys are holding on to players that are not champion Europe, <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an interesting one for sure. Uh, but going into this, again, I just want to let you guys know as to why I personally have swapped across to ETH only from now on. And that's one thing that I want to mention in this video as well. I'm a big believer in crypto. 
It's one of the main reasons as to why I got inv involved into SoRare in the first place. If I didn't have any interest in crypto, I don't think I would have gotten involved into SoRare. And that's maybe something that SoRare themselves need to think about. But um, I mean, they have already thought about it. They introduced a cash wallet, you dummy. Anyways, so I have switched to ETH only because I believe in crypto. I want to stack ETH. I want to get ETH. And I've been quite successful with getting into ranks that pay out cash rewards. And from now on, I just want to go ahead and utilize my card rewards that I win, that I want to sell on. If it's like a player I want to buy immediately, I'm going to go ahead and get that deal done with the ETH. But most of the time, I actually want to build an ETH balance. Ideally, I would absolutely love to build myself like one, two, three ETH, maybe by the end of the year uh, 2024. That'd be quite cool. Because if you look at previous crypto bull markets, it, it, the, the way it basically works is like four year cycles, right? And the last four year cycle, so to say, ETH got to like $4,900. That was the peak. And the rule for crypto so far, unless it's broken in the future, has been that the next bull market surpasses the previous all time high from the last bull market. So we have ended the last bull market. We are entering into a new one. So technically speaking, ETH should get back up to at least around 4,900, maybe even more than that. A lot of people are expecting during the peak of the bull market, ETH could be somewhere around 10 to 20,000. I'm not saying it's going to be. I'm just saying what people are speculating. I personally think even if it only gets back to like $5,000, it's still very impressive. So basically all the ETH that you're stacking now is going to be worth double later on. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because I personally am going to enjoy SoRare even more when even when the market values of some of the players that I have are going down, I still have ETH in my wallet, which is hopefully going up. So that way I can kind of balance things out and I can just enjoy the game for what it is. So I've sw switched back to ETH only again, just letting you guys know about that. Uh, from now on, that's the way I'm going to roll. If I need cards desperately, I'm just going to go ahead and buy them anyways. But right now, I don't have the desperate need to buy cards and I'm consistently winning. So I could hopefully finance it through that way. But it's okay. That's all I wanted to let you guys know about for today. Appreciate the fact that Nicolas has come out and put out another statement, which hopefully we should be getting a proper roadmap as we go into 2024 when the lads are back in the office and are able to put out a medium, a medium post that all of us can read through and hopefully not be too upset about when we're looking at the new competition structure. But at the end of the day, let's be honest, does SoRare really reflect real world football? If someone like Carlos Gil is basically just as good as like who's like insane in, in champion Europe, a Kimmich, for example. It really shouldn't be that way. So let's see how they figure this out. I hope it doesn't upset a lot of people. I personally am still heavily invested outside of champion Europe, so I'm going to be impacted as well. But I really hope they get this one right. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you all. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.